and we are thankful for your life and for being life and life more abundantly. Yeah. And we will tell the world, we will show the world, we will witness that you live because you live in us. Yes. Amen. And Father, as we gather around your word, we ask, Father, that you would lead me, hide me behind your dear cross. Lead me as to what to do and what to say that these your children, <coughs> whom you live in, yeah. will hear what you desire for us all to hear, in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. 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 We have been studying the book, uh, The Joy Stealers, by uh, Robert Renfro. Uh, we're in the second chapter of that book, and it concerns itself with one of the joy stealers, and that is bitterness. And we're still in that chapter. Uh, and it's a very good chapter. Uh, we want to order more books so everyone who desires a copy of the book can get it. Uh, we want to emphasize uh, a passage of scripture that comes uh, to us as part of the reading for that second chapter. Uh, as such, the second chapter of Robert Renfro's book uh, deals with giving of having our pain or her actually owning it. Uh, then putting the responsibility on those who hurt us or cause us pain and then uh, to give God our pain. Mm. To give God our pain. And in that section, it's just a brief piece on giving God our pain. It, it says that we need to tell God about our hurt and our pain. Hence we have uh, the scripture that we would like to share with you. Uh, it comes from the first letter of John, uh, the first chapter, and verse 4 and verse 9. And in keeping with uh, some of the underlying themes of the uh, book that we're reading, The Joy Stealers, um, whereas Jesus told his disciples, uh, in the 15th chapter of John, the 11th verse, he has spoken these words unto his disciples that his joy would remain in them and that their joy may be full. Hence the fourth verse of the first chapter of 1 John says, and these things we write to you that your joy, our joy, may be full. Mm. Then in the ninth verse of that same chapter, it says, if we confess, mm, our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And then he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness or wickedness or guilt. Amen. So a few moments with you longer. We like to give words around this thought. The joy in confession. The joy in confession. This is part of how we have a right relationship with God. In context, the whole chapter, first chapter of 1 John, deals with the theme of fellowship or mm -hmm. communion with God or relationship with God. 
It is for the Christian who is not quite there yet in terms of our daily living of sanctification, of being sanctified. And we miss the mark. And, and, and we don't get things right as we ought to. There are times where we just, just don't get it. And we sin or we fall short of the glory of God. We fall out of fellowship. And in and, and, and John's letter it says that we ought to seek that relationship with God, that fellowship with God. Hmm. If our joy is to be full, he's writing these things unto the church there, as well as to this church. If our joy is to be full, we have a choice. And that choice is confession. For the night verse, it says, if we confess. Hmm. That means that you and I, hmm, when we have hurt, or bitterness, or anger, or anything that would keep us from a fellowship with God, mm -hmm. it is our choice to keep it to ourselves, or to bury it. Mm -hmm. Those things that have happened in our past, even since childhood, we have a choice to keep them mm -hmm. to ourselves, and not experience the fullness of joy that God has for every one of us who are part of his family. Hmm? We have a choice to hold on to that pain. We have a choice to hold on to that anger or bitterness. We have a choice hmm? to not share with Christ who we really are. Because in fellowship with Christ, we ought to have relationship with Christ. Koinonia, meaning in common with Christ or in unison with Christ, in fellowship with Christ, then we don't just keep things, certainly hurtful things, to ourselves. We are in community with God. We share with him. We share our hurts and we share our concerns. We share our joys. We share our ups and downs. We share who we are, where we are, where we've been, where we think we're going, the contents of our hearts, the contents of our mind. We share with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in that day and time, the Hebrew thought and even the Greek thought was that, yes, we could share with one another, but it was unheard of to share with a deity, to share with God, to be in fellowship or in relationship with a deity, be in relationship with God. Hmm? So in relationship with God and sharing with him the most deepest of deepest thoughts that we have, the hurt that we have, the joys that we have, the doubts that we have, that we share with God. We share with Jesus. We share with the Holy Spirit in terms of what's going on in our hearts and in our minds. In order for us to be honest in our relationship with God and with each other, we must share in fellowship what's going on with us. Down to the core of our souls, we must share in community, in fellowship with God. And we have a choice hmm, on whether we share in community, in fellowship with God, the things that are causing us hmm, not to be as close as we ought to be with him. Hmm. Hmm. The connotation to this verse is that we have quote-unquote sin, and we all sin, we all misstep. Yeah. Hmm. That, that's a given. But it also means that we share some of the things that we are struggling with, it not necessarily have to be quote-unquote sin, mm -hmm. but it is something that is keeping us from a right relationship or close relationship or community with God that stands in our way of having 
Hmm, fellowship with God. And those things, those people, whatever it may be, brought us on and in fact is idolatry. Mm -hmm. That's a hard word, right? Mm -hmm. That we harbor our feelings, those whom feelings that we have for that person, this person, that thing, or whatever. Whatever we put before God mm -hmm. is idolatry. Mm -hmm. And we can idolatry. We can be an idolatry. We can uh, idolize those things that are natural to us. Mm -hmm. Those things, those feelings that we are having, we can emphasize so much that we forget that God is God. Right. And there is nothing that we should put before him. Mm -hmm. So John says that we should confess. Hmm unto him, that we should tell it to Jesus, that we should confess. The Greek word for confession is homo legeo, homo legeo, and, 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 and a part of those many meanings for confessions or declaring it, it is, is saying, saying the same thing as another. If I confess, then I'm going to say the same thing as another. And in this instance, it is saying the same thing as the Holy Spirit. Mm. Which means if we're going to say the same thing as the Holy Spirit, we must have to listen to what he is actually saying to us. Mm. So that we can repeat mm, in ourselves so that we may know what he already knows about us. Mm. Because we have a tendency to call some things that are more palatable to our ears mm, mm, and, and we bury that real feeling, that real hurt, that real pain far beneath and we try to dress it up. Mm -hmm. we, we try to have it sound more pleasant to ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we want others to think that mm, we're not having a hard time with something. And we'll say, well, I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit knows that we're not doing okay. I'm doing fine. But the Holy Spirit, when he speaks to us, when he convicts us, and when we confess, when we have homo logeo as part of saying the same thing that the Holy Spirit says to us, that I'm not doing fine, I'm hurting here, mm. that, that, that I'm lonely here, and the Holy Spirit will convict us as to what we are, and where we are, and what we experience. Sometimes I don't even know what I feel. I don't know about you. Sometimes I don't know how I feel. I want to feel a certain way, but I find myself feeling quite different. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm a Christian, and I say the Christian things to say, but I am angry, I am hurting, I am in pain, I am struggling down here with life, and the Holy Spirit is wanting us to say the same thing so we would come into an awareness of where we are yes. with him in fellowship. Right. We come to him confessing mm, that we are struggling, confessing that we have fallen short, confessing that there is no other help other than him. We've tried this, that, and the other. We tried painkillers. We tried booze. We tried all of that other stuff, seeking some help. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we come to him saying, oh God, help me. Mm. Oh God, have mercy upon me. Yes, sir. And, and we tell him that, oh, mm, my head is hurting. Mm. My back is hurting. We tell him that this person is not right and that person is not right. Uh, and as we do, the Holy Spirit wants us to confess, particularly like me, that I'm hurting, 
That's the reason why I'm angry. Did somebody hurt me? That I'm in pain. Yeah. But I lash out in anger. He wants us to go deep down and realize what he knows about us. Yeah. And confess and say the same thing. So when we verbalize it, when we hear ourselves say that I'm a wretch and I'm all undone, yeah. hmm, that I can confess and that we can have fellowship. Yes, JB, you are dust, you are dirt, but you're my dirt. Yeah. Hmm, that I can be free. I can be free by confessing. By saying the same thing that the Holy Spirit says about me. Yes, I can put a smile on my face, but that I might have mm, hate in my heart. The Holy Spirit will have me confess that I have hate in my yeah. heart. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will make me confess that my faith is not like it ought to be. Mm, that I get up with some, some mornings that I have doubt on whether I can make it through the day. Mm-hmm. That I am not faithful as I ought to be. That my walk is not close as it ought to be. That I complain about this and I complain about that. And Jesus is convicting me to say, J.B., you ought to say, thank you, God, for another day. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That when we confess, when we say the same thing that the Holy Spirit is saying into us, we align ourselves up so he can cleanse us. So he can set us free. That we, when we tell him exactly how it is that we are now entering into a relationship that's honest, that's transparent, that is vulnerable for us to hear the things that we don't want to hear about ourselves. So we can get clean, so we can get free. That I'm hanging on to this hurt too long. That I'm hanging on to this grief too long. That I'm hanging on to this pain too long. That I must cast all of my cares upon him. And he will take care of you. Mm. So when we go through whatever we're going through, mm, whatever we are struggling with, whether it be that bitterness that has turned us away from God, that's keeping us from a right relationship with God, or whether it's that someone has hurt me, Hmm. And I just can't let it go in his bitterness and it's driving me from that person as well as from God. That I'm in prison and I need to let myself out of prison. That I need what the Holy Spirit says that I need exactly what I need so that I can be free. So that I can be set free, that I can have a relationship of communion with God, yeah. mm, that I can have a fellowship with God, that I can confess that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, yeah. that the Lord is my way maker, I can confess that he has never left me, or never will leave me, I can confess that he is God, he is love, he is God, he is my Savior, that I can confess. Yeah. Yeah. That's sticking closest than any other relative. Yeah. He is my way maker. That he is my door opener. That he is the bright and morning star. That he is the rose of Sharon. Mm -hmm. That he is the redeemer. He is salvation. He is life. He is the resurrection. He is the door. He is. I can confess. That God is God. And there is no other power that can help me. That God is Savior. I can't save myself. But yeah. he is Savior. And I can wholly depend on him. That he is the shoulder of which I will cry upon, lean upon, depend upon. He is the gift. The perfect gift. Yeah. For a sinner like me. For someone who needs it so desperately. Sometimes I don't even know what I want. Mm -hmm. And he will convict me as in my confession. Mm -hmm. Mm, Here's what you want. Mm -hmm. I want Jesus. I want him to walk with me. And I want him to talk with me. I want him to tell me that I am his own. I want him to walk with me. Hand in hand. I want him to cheer me up. I want him to lift me up. I want him to fill me up. I want him to pour into me. I want him. I want Jesus. To walk with me. Oh, yes. I want him. Yes. As 
my Savior. I want him as my father. I want him as my mother. I want him as my friend. I want him as my co-worker. I want him to be all in my life. And I confess that he is whom he says he is. I am that I am. Everything we need is in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.